vortex. Yeah, I mean, wow. highs of like minus two, minus three, minus four with wind chill on top. Yep. All right, Stephanie, since you and I both have hard stops, let's go ahead and get started 20 seconds early and we should catch everybody anyway. <laughs> Yep. All right. So thank you everybody for joining on. If you have not yet, please drop your name, your library, where you're calling in from into the chat. Uh, the purpose of this is supposed to be interactive. This is a Q&A. This is an opportunity for our friends over at ViewSpace to introduce some really cool programming ideas and like great resources for you to utilize. But we also want you to um, ask questions of them. How can I use this? How can I get involved? Um, so we want this to be interactive. So feel free to unmute and ask your questions. You can drop your questions in the chat. You can open up your camera, whatever you like. We want to make this really engaging. And if you have issues um, with audio, because I know with me, my internet's been having some issues the last couple days. So there is a call in number. If you ever need that, um, just put a message in the chat and I'll be sure to drop that number in. And you can call in via your telephone if your internet has issues. So next slide, Annie. So here's the quick agenda. We're going to do an introduction. Uh, Tim's going to take over and kind of walk us through what view space is and uh, what's really cool about it. And then we're going to get into a few different discussion questions and these will also evolve. So we won't stick exactly to this, but just in your head, kind of think about, oh, what can I use in my programming? Can this be passive programming? Do I have this set up in my library to do this? And what's great about view space is because we are in the era of COVID, this is something that you can use currently and then something you can also use once we can all see each other again. Uh, so for introductions, in case you aren't familiar with me, my name is Stephanie Vero Fields. I'm the relationship coordinator here at Starnet. So my job is literally to be for you guys. I am here to answer your questions, give you guys some resources, connect you with different people. So if you guys ever have any questions, I will drop my email in the chat. Feel free to send me an email, even if it's just to say hello. I love conversations. I love talking to people. Um, and so we also have Annie on the line. I'm going to make you tell yourself. <laughs> I definitely didn't take a big bite of ice cream while wrapped in a heating blanket because that would be weird. Uh, so <laughs> hi, I'm Annie Holland. <laughs> I'm the community engagement and exhibits manager here. Um, so those of you who have been around for a while, um, I used to be your Stephanie. I am trying to transition out of the frontline stuff. So bother Stephanie now when you need things. She's doing great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Annie. And then we also have our friends over at ViewSpace. So Tim and Caroline, if you guys could introduce yourselves. Yeah. So um, my name is Tim Rue. I am the, uh, I am an informal education specialist at the Space Telescope Science Institute. So it's my job to work with libraries, museums, other out of class learning experiences. Um, and the Space Telescope Science Institute, in case you're not familiar with it, which would be most people, we actually do the science operations for the Hubble Space Telescope. We're gonna be doing the science and the flight operations for the James Webb Space Telescope. We also do all sorts of other things for NASA. Um, and we're on top of that, we are uh, the lead institution within something that's known as NASA's universe of learning. Um, so we're working on creating ways for lifelong learners to engage, participate, identify with science uh, through the lens of astronomy beyond our solar system. Um, and Carolyn is here with me today. Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything yourself, Carolyn. Sure, I can just say that uh, Tim and I work in the same place in the same group. We have uh, different titles, but we do very much the same things. Uh, we collaborate together quite a bit. And one of the main things that we've been collaborating on for the last year at least or so has been view space. So I'm real happy to, to join in here and backstop him with anything he needs yeah. and anything that you, the audience needs. Yeah. And that's that's not to say ViewSpace has only been around for a year. Um, I've been working on it for four four-ish years now. It's actually been around for over twenty. Um, it's one of the products that we've created to help engage people at kind of an introductory level. Um, like I said, we have NASA's University of Learning, and we've got things all along the spectrum there for for people to get in and get involved in different ways. Um, but uh, ViewSpace is one of the intro things. So let me share my screen here. Annie, uh, oh, sharing. Perfect. Yep, there we go. And we'll pick Chrome. All right. 
Um, so there are, ViewSpace is now online as a website, uh, and there are three different ways for people to engage with it. Uh, there are some digital interactives, there is a video library, and there's a video collection. And I'm going to show you a little bit of an intro to, to what each of these are. So uh, among these, these interactives, there are ways for people to engage with some of this space content. And we can see an example of that here on the homepage, where we've got the Whirlpool Galaxy, and we can move this little bar back and forth and look at it, how it looks in different light. Um, so I'm going to go into interactives, and the one I want to show you to start actually is this firefighter. Um, which is really designed to help give people a sense of what they might see in these interactives and, and, and how they work. Um, so there's a slider bar at the bottom of all of them. And as you pull it across, you're going to look at things in, in different ways. So this starts in visible light and we pull our firefighter across. We're going to see what that firefighter might be seeing in infrared light. Um, and the, beyond just the image here, um, there are some little labels on the picture, which might help identify some of the stuff. Uh, particularly when you get to the astronomy content, people might not be familiar with what's on screen. Uh, and then this, there's a little line here uh, below the picture, giving a little more information on what's going on there. We're trying to tell we're trying to tell a little bit of a story, both in images and some words, to help support that um, and provide access for people who don't know it. And we've got lots of different things uh, here that people can all explore at their own pace in their own order, however they want. So here's another one of my favorites. The Helix Nebula. Uh, this is a, a, a planetary nebula up in space. It's, it's what remains after a star has died. You can see it here in infrared. And if you want, you can look at it in invisible, the ultraviolet, the X-ray, and the multi-wavelength, which is a couple of those views stacked together. If you want to get on and play with it yourself right now, viewspace.org. Um, is how you can get in and play yourself, but I'm gonna go through a few more things here. Um, you'll notice we also have some, uh, some graphical labels uh, and you can turn these things off if you just wanna see the pictures themselves. Um, but those, those, those little graphic annotations, again, are there to help give people an identify, okay, this is the glowing shell of gas that we're talking about. Um, and like I mentioned, we've got lots of different types in here. Uh, here's another one. Gathering light. This is a picture from the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't look quite as nice as those pictures you're used to seeing, but that's because this is a really, really distant, faint object. Uh, and we're only spending about 20 minutes of time on this initial picture. But we can actually look at what it looks like if we look a little bit longer. Here's 97 hours. And if we take that, if you do that 97 hours and a few different filters, a few different uh, uh, types of light and put those together, we get this gorgeous image of thousands of thousands of galaxies. That image is, a, if, if you're looking at the sky and you held up a, a penny, that's about the size of the eye on Abraham Lincoln there, out at arm's length. Um, and each of those specks of light, except for, uh, I think the, there's three stars in here. Uh, you can tell them by the, the little cross hatches on. Um, but each of those is a galaxy made up of maybe hundreds of thousands of stars. Um, so this is just a fun way for people to look at some of this imagery and get a sense of what's out there. Uh, if you look at that spot, by the way, with uh, your naked eye, this is what you're going to see. <laughs> Nothing, basically. Um, we also have let me pull one more here, uh, orbital distance. This is a uh, system out there. This is an artist illustration of uh, the TRAPPIST-1 system, which has seven uh, planets, which are about the size of Earth, all orbiting around this one star. And it gives you a little bit more information about some of the inner, um, outer, and what in planets known in what's known as the Goldilocks zone. Um, now, with all of these, there's also some more detail if you scroll down a little bit. Uh, we've got some information in words. We know that people learn in different ways, and that if you present information in multiple formats, uh, they're more likely to, to, to take something away and get engaged and, and have their curiosity spark, which is what we're looking for. Uh, we also have links to more information about the same content. These are all other pieces of that NASA's universe of learning that I was talking about earlier. Um, you can go and look at AstroViz and see different pictures. You can look at the universe unplugged, and there's some videos that have some celebrities in them uh, talking about this. I think uh, this one has the a few people from the expanse. Um, we, 
a couple of those uh, sites are actually in Southern California. Maybe that's what you were thinking of earlier, Stephanie. Um, and, and they work with a few folks there. Um, so all sorts of different ways for people to engage. Um, and uh, this is something that you, anybody can get on and access right now, be it in your library. They can do it at home too, but uh, lots of different ways. I'm gonna move on and show you a little bit about the video library. So this is, in addition to those interactive content pieces, we also have lots and lots of videos. We've actually been producing these for, like I said, about 20 years. Um, so there's lots of content covering a whole load of, uh, of topics. And for some of those who prefer video content, it's, it involves some beautiful images, some stunning visualizations. Um, so you can go in, this is one of them, this is what you can see. You can make that full screen if you want. Um, I'm actually going to switch what I am sharing and okay, I believe I am now sharing QuickTime Player. It's a black screen. Um, oh, you know what I didn't do? Here, let me just realizing share sound optimized for video clip. There we go. Let me try this again. I'm going to play just a few seconds here. There's a little bit of background uh, music going on. Uh, this one starts off with a question and a couple answer choices to give people a little bit. And it's, it's asking them about this particular image. It gives a little bit of time for people to read through those, kind of come up with their own idea. Uh, and then once that bar gets to the bottom, it'll go ahead and give uh, what the correct answer is. Uh, this particular one then goes into the background and talks a little bit more about everything. We'll see that in just a moment. Um, all of the content through view space is conveyed through text on screen with some kind of, uh, with, with some music along with it. it. We kind of think of it as a bit of more of a, a meditative or relaxing experience. Um, this was originally designed for museums. Um, so it's the sort of thing that you might have um, as part of a science exhibit for people to kind of hang out and, and, and take a break from all of the uh, things going on around them. Um, I will pause that, it will keep continue going. This one's about, what, three minutes long? Um, so we've got all sorts of things. Let me sh move back to my browser here. There we go. Um, most of the stuff that we have is astronomy content. We actually do have a, a decently large segment of earth science content as well. Uh, from telescopes, or, or not telescopes, but from various instrument satellites in orbit looking back down at Earth from space. Um, we've worked with the Earth Observing System portion of NASA to create a lot of that content. Um, so there's, there, there's, there's a lot there. Um, if we go back to the, the video library, um, you can see everything that comes in all sorts of different categories so people can explore it in different ways. We've got news. We actually put up a, a new news piece about once a week um, so there's always new stuff going on. There's always old stuff coming out. Um, most of the videos, most of the videos are less than five minutes, and and actually a pretty decent chunk are under two minutes long um, with everything that we have. Um, some of them are arranged in these themes, um, where you can, uh, where you can play them all in order. Uh, but they all also they all work as standalone pieces as well, and they but. If you want, they will flow into each other and build on a concept. Um, I mentioned if you go to any particular video, there's a, 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 a voiceover with it, which will actually describe what you people see on screen, both the text and the images, um, in an audible voice, so that somebody who might be having uh, a, might have visual impairment can also access this content. Um, and I should also mention that, uh, let's see. Down, if you go down a little bit further, there are credits. There are transcripts for these pieces, so you can read through things as well. Uh, and there are also some more of these links to other content as well. Um, so the last piece I want to show you, that's the video library. The last piece I want to show you is the video collection. So this is an option for informal learning sites like libraries or museums to actually set up a monitor and show view space videos continuously without anyone having to sit there and click through things. Um, there are three basic collections. There's a space collection, there's an earth collection, 
And then there's the view space collection, which is both of the two combined. Um, and let's see, I mentioned it's, it's four libraries, it's for museums. Um, as a library, you can get a free account. We've never charged for this. Um, NASA is paying for us to create this stuff and to support it. So it's something that's available for you. If you do click on this, um, it, I'm, I'll click on one. It's not going to play very well because of Zoom. Um, but it'll automatically start to play. It's going to loop. There's an algorithm kind of figuring out what it's going to play next. It's moving in kind of a semi-random order. Um, the, the content will automatically update with no input needed on your end. And you can full screen this if you want. I won't because the screen sharing piece. But it'll go through all of this wonderful content that we've got. Um, so let's back out of that. Oops. Um, we also have, there's a setup guide here with all the instructions that you might need. Um, and we can do a little bit of support if you need help as well. But in here, there's actually a guide. So that all you would need to do is press the power button on a computer and the computer will boot up, open up the browser, go to the right site and start playing with you doing no more than just having to press that power button. So you just turn it on in the morning, let it run all day, turn it off at night to save a little electricity and, um, and you're good to go. Um, there's no cost to this beyond the hardware. Um, you only need a computer that can access the inter an internet browser and a monitor. We've had people run this on a Raspberry Pi before. That's not necessarily our normal recommendation, but I know it's possible. Um, and so, and it's pretty easy to get access to as well. I mentioned viewspace.org is how you get to the site. Um, if you go to videos, um, you can either click on videos on that homepage or you can go through videos up here. Um, there's a request an account, which just moves you down further on the page. Scroll down, put in your name, your title, your organization, your zip code, uh, an email. We'd recommend getting a general, setting up a general one, like viewspace at library.org or something, so that it's not linked to a particular person. Uh, it just makes things easier in case there are transitions or if someone's on vacation, we send out a, a little notice um, that's useful. And the fact that you're a library. Click Submit, and Carolyn, who's on this uh, call, will get an email and set you up with everything. Um, so we've tried to make it as easy as possible. So uh, with all of that, there are many different ways that you can use this. Um, you could set up an exhibit. Uh, there are you know, lots of different places that do have view space. But you could set it up as an exhibit um, and have a monitor playing. Uh, right within your site, if you've got some sort of science section or somewhere else where you think that's appropriate for you. Um, it, like I said, it's used all across the country. Places like the Smithsonian and the California Academy of Science actually have this set up. Um, plus, individual libraries uh, throughout the country have, have these. Um, you could set up a workstation for people to use uh, if you want to set up a computer and people can uh, play around in the video library or the interactives. Uh, or maybe you just list it or link it on some of the various resource lists or activities uh, that you might have on your normal computer bank, uh, computer lab, or whatever you may have set up as something that people can explore. You could use it as um, part of a facilitated activity, um, either using library devices, like if you have tablets that you pull out for something when you've got a live program, um, or you could take advantage of visitor devices because it's set up so that this will work just fine on a mobile device as well, a phone. Um, or maybe you've got education programming um, that's actually designed around this content. Um, pull up one more page. There is, for example, I mentioned NASA's Universe of Learning, how we've got all of these different things. One of the things we've got out there is something known as Girls Steam Ahead with NASA. And there are these cookbooks. And I'll drop this link in the chat in just a moment. Um, but it gives descriptions of how to use things like view space. And if you go in here, pass all of the background information in case you don't have it yourself, um, there's a scenario called Forms of Light. And it, it gives you an overview, it talks about the audience, the materials that you might need, and how to actually use view space in this case um, to set up an activity on your floor. There's a 60 minute option, a 90 minute option. You can just take pieces from it if you want to do something shorter. Um, so you can you can do that. You could also pull it up for staff or volunteer training if you've got some sort of science stuff going on. Um, we're also looking for other ideas that you might have. There's that link to the uh, cookbook if you want it. 
Um, we're also looking for other ideas that you might have about how to use uh, view space in a library or or otherwise, and we can put some of those on our website and share with others. Um, so that's the basic intro to view space that I've got. Uh, that's a lot of me talking. Like we said, we want to hear some stuff from you. What do you think might be some good ways to use this? Um, do any of you already do something like this? Or do you have some questions about how to use it or, or anything that we could do to improve this to make it something that would be useful for you? Um, I'll stop sharing my screen so I can see you as well. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. All right, Annie, we actually have a couple questions to get you guys started. But first off, I want to hear kind of what are your reactions about this really awesome resource for you guys to be able to use? And you're welcome like what, to uh, type or unmute. Yes, yes, please unmute or drop in chat. Both, uh, both work for me. So Kimberly says she can't wait to just play with it and see how to incorporate it into your programming. So Elizabeth's going to be sharing it on her library's Facebook page. I see a lot of my homeschool moms digging this. So yeah, if you have a homeschooling group that you are in connection with, share this with them. Uh, some of the ideas that we have is if, um, you know, we know a lot of you guys are doing take and make kits. If you have a science-y take and make kit, maybe you have this, a link to a video that people can play while they do their take and make. Uh, Sarah says we have a monitor behind our circulation desk where it would be cool to show the videos. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Michael, you raised your hand. Would you like to say something? Yeah, just, just easier to say it than type it the way on LinkedIn. Um, I don't know if I have a direct application for it myself, but I work with a librarian who manages a teen tech squad that does uh, STEM programming with children and their teen employees. So I'm going to make sure she's got this info. I'm also going to share it, I think, out with our system-wide uh, K-12 educator team, and they might be able to include it in one of the K-12 educator newsletters or something. Uh, Galena raised your hand. Could you please? I Forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Your audio Ooh. is coming through a little bit oddly, Galena. I, I believe yeah, your audio is the word we were going for. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, your audio is a little, little tinny. Yeah, I can't quite understand what you're saying there. Uh, you might need to put that in the chat. So people are saying just putting it on your basic library monitor. Absolutely. This can be a completely passive way of engaging your patrons, especially once we all come back together. Uh, Sarah says she's sharing it with your library astronomy club next week. You have a library astronomy club, which is also pretty epic. Good, good job. That's great. And to the people who uh, are, are putting it behind your circulation desk or something like that, there's, there's plenty of content. You're not going to see repeats. and. Uh, things will change out. So you shouldn't get too bored sitting there. Uh, it'll be great for whoever has to whoever has to be there for too long. Perfect. So any ideas for pandemic times is what Galena was trying to say. So Tim, I'm going to let you come up with a few ideas. Yeah. Um, so I know I know there are lots of places that have been uh, creating some things uh, for activities at home. Um, and like I mentioned, there's the cookbook there may be, I don't remember. Carolyn, do you know if there's anything for people to try at home with that? Um, in, in what respect? In the cookbooks or some of the other U of L stuff that we've got going on? Well, you know, the cookbook was, was written in the last few months. Mm -hmm. So it was already starting from the point of everybody is virtual. Um, it's intended to be able to be facilitated in a group activity, but it's also well suited to just doing everything at home uh, with very few exceptions. So yeah, there, there are a lot of things you can do with like a Girl Scout group or something like that, where you just uh, let everybody have access to the cookbook ahead of time. I see Sherry's, Sherry's making yeah. a note about a uh, Planet Steam backpack that has uh, books and a game or a puzzle and craft mm -hmm. suggestions. This is something else for kids to play with. Yes, yeah. and, I, and I did put, so, sorry, Tim, I, I put something in the chat also that just reminds uh, all of the people listening in here that while having an account for you is really helpful for you to be able to have that uh, 
constantly looping video on, on a passive screen for people to watch, you're more than welcome to share with all your, your patrons that they can go to viewspace.org at home and without an account still get to every single one of the videos and the interactives that Tim has been showing you so that they can uh, do with those what they will. Yeah, great for home performance, Susan says. Yeah, the only thing the only thing that a person at home can't do is set up a screen to play it continuously. Um, we, we that requires some bandwidth on our end as well, and we can manage that for libraries out there, but we can't manage it for every American out there, for example. Totally fair. Um, so one of the other ways that we were kind of considering this, and Tim, you and I had talked about this, is when we can all come back together, you know, and actually see each other in person, this is something that could be really cool that you put in the background, maybe while you're doing your program. If you have a STEAM program, you can have this looping in the background while you're also doing your activity. Um, just kind of an added layer to kids asking questions, something for them to watch, because one of the things we do know is everybody does learn a little differently. So this is something that can be really cool for your patrons to engage with at a different level. Yeah, it's a nice thing to distract the adults too, while you're trying to do something with the kids. Um, Distracting, but also they learn. Yeah, yeah. Um, having having worked in a, on the floor of a museum myself, I know how uh, sometimes when you're trying to do some stuff with the kids that the adults will, will um, interject themselves too so um do what we have we'll any other know? uh oh, lauren that's going to be stsci.edu i'll put that in yeah so lauren asked what domain will the email to create uh an account come from many things get stuck in our filters before they even get to our junk folder so i do not want to miss it absolutely You know, this is something we really want you guys to engage with. And like we said, this is free. This is provided from NASA funding. So you guys have all the access to it. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Any Or do you guys have ideas in ways to send this out both during the pandemic and maybe after the pandemic? I put my email in there in case you have issues as well. Perfect. And I saw that we have Claire also from uh, SSI. Claire, you this is the first time you're seeing this. What are what are ways that you think that this could be really helpful for library staff as well? Hey, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. This is Claire from Space Science Institute. Um, one of the things that I am working on right now is putting um, links to a lot of these resources into activities on our STEM activity clearinghouse. Um, as a related resource. So if you ever browse uh, the STEM Activity Clearinghouse, um, especially our Take and Make collection, which I'll drop in the chat, um, I'll, we're working on finding resources from ViewSpace that will pair with those Take and Make activities. So um, you can take an activity, bundle it, all the materials together, and maybe have the link provided in that too. So when families take them home, they have something to check out online to really round out their take home um, experience. So I'll drop those resources in the chat and hopefully that that can be of use as well. Awesome. Thank you, Claire. You know, All right, we only I have can, a couple. Oh, I, let, let me point out something out real quick. And that is that the videos uh, all have direct links and you can also filter by by certain categories. For example, if you want to filter by Eclipse. Um, I think you can. Uh, we had the eclipse a couple years ago. There's going to be another one in three more years. Maybe you want to throw out a link to all of the eclipse videos uh, when that comes around. That's an option as well. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So we only have a couple minutes left. Does anybody have any other questions or ideas? Oh, Susan said, I've you, I will use it with art classes, finger painting galaxies. Yes, absolutely. The, this does not have to be completely reserved for STEM programming. If you're doing some really fun art, like one of our uh, activities is art and the cosmic connection. If you're doing something like that, uh, you can definitely put this on and just to give somebody ideas. Yeah, it's great in STEAM activities. It's great for an art class. Um, you can use this in multiple ways. And because Tim has got the really awesome Earth collection, we do have Earth, you know, when 
Earth Science Week comes up or Earth Day, the, this is a great way to pair that with that as well. So does anybody else have any questions? Are there any plans to add astronaut related videos? What happens to our bodies in space, et cetera? We tend not to do the human spaceflight portion. Um, that's a different section of NASA from, from what we're focused on. We tend to focus more on the, the, the science of, of the, the physics of what's out there. Um, so we don't have plans about the astronaut stuff, sorry. Awesome, okay. Uh, Michelle asked, will there be a follow-up email with all the links that have been shared? Yes, actually. Uh, Carolyn is working on a blog post on our website that will have connections to all of this. We'll be sure to put that there. And I will make sure to add uh, links to our clearinghouse, uh, links to everything else. If you are new to StarNet, feel free to check out our new and improved website that uh, Greg just finished. And you know, check out some of the stuff that we have there as well. But there will be a blog coming out, and when it does, I'll be sure to email all of you with its link so then you can find some more information. Oh, I love that, Susan. Great idea. Five minute quiet time. Just putting this on with the calm music and very pretty images. Great. All right, guys. So we are at the top of the hour. I know this was kind of like a quick and dirty. Here's a great resource. Let's go. Um, if you have any more questions, our, our emails are in the chat. I will make sure that when we post this on our website, the chat will be there so you can also grab any links or uh, emails that have been provided. And yeah, like Carolyn said, everyone just go check out ViewSpace. Go have fun. Go explore. Thank you for having us all. It's been great. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, everyone. You have a great rest of your day and stay warm. <laughs>